Okay, so let's see. I'm not sure where Pam is. She, someone said she's on here and they saw her. So I want to find her first really quick, but, um, okay. So thank you guys, you diamonds and up for being on. We're super excited. We have tons of questions that came anonymously from into it um and like you know answers we'll just, whatever you want to say whenever you want to say it you just go ahead and say it okay so let's get started. okay so great question how do you stay motivated after losing rank team members dropping off and you boosting more i'm having a hard time yeah of course okay all right, so here's the thing. Um, that happens to all of us, okay? So every, we, it's called a life experience, and it's it's a part of business. It happens to everybody and every business for business on the face of the earth. So you're not alone things are going through your mind uh that are not true like i i can't believe that happened to me uh, i i'm not a good leader i mean these are things that go through um i i've lost my mojo on recruiting all of these things start to to play into our mind when you need, just need to look at it and say okay at some point and this is the biggest thing that i want you to understand is take full responsibility Take full ownership of your business and where you're at right now. Because at some point, you slowly stopped doing what you were doing to get there. there it, 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 I can look at the math and, and come up with that solution right there for you. So we need to, first of all, to be big, be big, put those big girl panties on big guy panties on and take full on responsibility for it. Because when you do that, that's very free. When you're not blaming someone else, blaming the company, blaming, blaming my team, blaming my unsupportive spouse, blaming whatever, and you take full ownership, you give back the power to you to change it. And when you're not, and you're in the blame mode, then, then the company has the power, the team has the power, the spouse has the power. So we wanna take back the power by taking full ownership. So take full ownership, look yourself in the mirror and say, look, I know how to build. I know how to recruit, I know how to gather customers. I I'm a team player, I I'm, I'm good. I'm daggone good at this. I've already proven it to myself before. So what I did is I got, in a slump, I got complacent, I sat down, I sat down too long, I looked back, my team was no longer inspired, and because when you're on, your game is on, and you're moving, you're not looking back here to see who's following you, you're not even thinking about them, you're like, not going, well, where's my team, your, your team is like on your heels, because they sense your inspiration, and they want to be a part of that, and and the ones that are dropping off, you're not thinking about them. It's just like we do not sit in the office and have roundtable discussions on who quit. We don't, I'm sorry, I, I know they think that we do and we have these chatter parties and we're thinking, oh my God, so-and-so. We're already at a billion and beyond, so we have to be thinking a, a year ahead of, of all those ones that quit that that so that was so yesterday and that's not to be ugly or non caring that's business you chose to leave okay that's that you chose to leave we're we're not we're building we're growing we're evolving so look at it in that perspective come on you're good you 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 now you when you own it you can teach your team and coach them not to do the same thing or how else could you do that it's just part a part of learning we've all done it every single one of us 
We blame it on being tired. Not really. We blame it on something. Not really. We just sit down. So own it. Own it. Now get back up. Get the goal sheet back out there. Get the chart back out there. If you're ambassador, take your 2.0 where you want it to go and build it differently this time. Build it with the knowledge and the wisdom that you have. Uh, if you're if you're a diamond wanting to go double, where's your chart? Where's your chart? I want that chart to have keto coffee stains on it. I want it to have green stains on it. I want it to be penciled in, penciled out. Those that left, just mark them off. They're gone. Don't think back there with them. Let them go. This is about you having now more time to put an energy into brand new people that will bring you life. So that's how I would answer that question. So it's funny because I swear everything you said kind of answers the next 10 questions. <laughs> um, okay, so. Well, good. Let's go to number 11. <laughs> okay, perfect. Okay, so. Um, can you build your business completely from social media? You want somebody else to answer that? If anyone feels compelled to. <laughs> okay, so I'll touch on that. In okay. all honesty, I have built my business a lot over social media. I moved to a new state, but you get them from social media and you take them off social media and that's how you build those lifelong relationships, those good relationships. That's how you keep your team going. If you're nowhere near them, FaceTime, things like that, it's still off of social media and just having that personal connection. But I do believe you can build completely on social media, but I don't believe you should try <laughs> because you're losing out on a complete market that you you know, are not seeing there. And I think it's so important too that people that I found on social media, they would have never signed had I not said, Hey, let's go to meet at Starbucks. You know, they just weren't that kind of person. They would have, they wouldn't have just signed over social media. And so for me, getting them off social media is huge. And I also have people who have worked months and months trying to build up their social media and I said, go have a party, go have a party, go have a party. And when they finally had a party, they signed a bunch of people at that party. And I was like, there you go. Like, maybe that's your niche. And so I think it's important for everybody to at least do all of these things and try all of these things, even if you're excelling in social media as well. I want to add to that too. Yeah, that's okay. Okay. I want to add to it too, but let her go next. Okay. All right. No pressure. <laughs> I built the majority of my business belly to belly. And if I'm being honest with myself, you know, and I've had those conversations with Pam and where I got stuck and where that, that sand got quick was when I stopped doing that. And for me, there's nothing like being able to like taste something and smell something and be shoulder to shoulder with somebody and have that energy and you're all hyped up and then you leave the party and you can't go to sleep. And then like you're even that much more excited. So you message a few more people, you follow up with a few more people. There's just, you can't replicate that. And there are people all over that are joining businesses that are party based. You know, I love that I can take my purse and throw what I need in it to do a one-on-one -on -one or a party for 20 people. It's always the same stuff, you guys, but people want to party. They like that energy. They want to get out of the house. And so, you know, one of the things that I have noticed is that I have stopped tailoring or putting on my posts like young moms or stay at home moms because, um, moms or parents or whoever who have like kids that are in college, they're not running like crazy. Like I am trying to get everybody to activities and do all this stuff and they're stressed out. They want to be around people again. They're trying to find that next like thing and way to spend their time. And they have friends that are doing the same thing. And so I forgot how much fun it is to stay up late and to just like hang out with people and get to know them. So I've been getting the wrap on more people. I've been getting back to just doing one-on-one. -on -one. We're going to be drinking a lot more coffee um, now when we're doing our one-on-ones, but it's, it's fun and it's contagious into my posts on social media and my comments on social media. So it's like a full circle, but it's not the one and only thing that I'm doing that I had been doing for a while. I got away from belly to belly. So I love that. And we've had those strong conversations, Melissa, and I'm so thankful that you, you paid attention to that and you got back 
where your gifts are, and that is being in front of people. And uh, we all have that gift. A lot of us have lost it. I was going to go back to the uh, the relationship part of social media. Um, it'd be like online dating and never having the date. You know, you you meet somebody online and you're just having conversations, but you never get to uh, the 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 date, the offline date. And I that's so then we know the relationship would end. We know the relationship would end. So we've got to have that, whether that is everybody gets together at green carpet or you have a retreat or what, you've got to build those strong relationships or you are going to lose people through that. And then as far as how do you build, build wherever, make whatever makes you happy. There is no one way. That's what I love about this crazy rap, this company, is we can build offline, online, and all lines. Uh, but you are all missing, uh, you're, you're advertising every single day for all of us. And I thank Nashville for it profusely. I said, thank you all for all your ads that you're putting out there for on all of our behalfs, but, but you're not going back behind that and doing any asking whatsoever. And so there, there are millions of people out there that are not going to be on your social media feed. They're going to be in your neighborhood. They're going to be at your local Starbucks, at your coffee shop, at, excuse me, at your grocery store. They're going to be at your kid's uh, playground. That's where they're going to be. And so go get out, put that shirt on, get out from behind the computer and go meet the world. They're waiting for you. And host those parties because you're missing a whole network of people that are my age. They're, um, they're your parents. And we know how to network. We know how to be social. We know how to go to a party and not turn our phone on. We know how to connect. We know how to have conversations. We are well connected. We know how to party. We were raised in the party forum of network marketing. We're good at it. And we're most are broke and they need this opportunity and we're missing them because they're not going to be scrolling through your social media. They're looking only at their kids and their grandkids pictures. So that's where you're going to find them. And that's why when you look out, you see all this youth in our business who I love and admire, but where's everybody else? When the, the population is going to be inhabited uh, and it, it, it always has been with the baby boomers and they're broke. We need to get out and look at what we have hands. Awesome. That was amazing. Okay, so the next question, what do you do when you have jealousy within your team that causes drama and false statements? Oh, that's all. That's it. Sorry. <laughs> I have something I want to share on this one, and it's something that Pam actually taught me a few years ago. So sometimes rumors can be spread, whether they're about you or somebody on your team, and the advice that Pam gave me when this, when I was in this situation where there was some jealousy issues, there was drama. Um, I, I called Pam one day. I was bawling. I was so upset over what was being said about me. And she said something that just rang so, like, I've never forgotten this. She said, well, Jocelyn, is it true? And I said, no. And then she said, okay, stop worrying about it. And so whatever is going on, whether you're just in the middle of it and you're trying to coach your team through it, ask them that same thing. Is it true? Yes or no. If, if it's true, then yeah, you've got to help them overcome that and fix the problem. But if it's not, then they just need to keep doing what they're doing because they're doing something right. I'm so glad. I remember that. I remember that. Uh, so she was being picked on and, um, by a group of women who are no longer with us. And um, it was totally unfair. And so when I asked Jocelyn, I said, Jocelyn, is that true about you? And you, you stopped, you caught your breath and you said, no. I said, then let's move on. It, the, because the more you get in there and aggravate it. Now, if there's a whole feed going on on your team page, if there, there is negativity, then you as a leader, have the utmost right and should have the respect of that team, but go in behind the scenes. Don't do it on the feed because that's just creating more animosity. You know, in the book, uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People, uh, 
one of the, uh, he was a gangster anyway. They said, well, why'd you shoot all those people? He said, because they talked about me. And what that means is we get on the defense. When, when people come after us, we're going to defend ourselves to the bitter end, even if we know we're wrong. You're not going to call me out on this. That wasn't me, blah, blah, blah. So you got to go behind the scenes and you got to ask, are you open for some coaching? And you ask them and you get their permission. And 99% of the time they're, they're curious enough and they want to know what, what you're getting ready to ask them. So ask them if they're open uh, for some coaching and then say, look, th this is going on. I'm not sure who, who started it, who's right, who's wrong, but we've got, this has got to end on my team page or I'm going to have to remove you. And I, I would not let it go for longer than 24 seconds. I mean, it's got to end because it, there, there's people on there that any reason to quit and they'll quit and negativity will cause that. So we want to take it out. Be professional about it. Don't call them out in front of everybody else. Go behind the scenes. Get it taken care of. And we are all on this Zoom here together. We need to grow up and be professional women. All of us. We, if, if we've got an attitude of jealousy. Uh, one of the things my mother taught me, and she's a very smart woman, is never ever make someone jealous or betray jealousy. That what We should be looking at each other in admiration and inspiration. If there is somebody that is doing something that, that they have that you want, look at that with, if they have it, I know I can have it. If they, if they're there, I know I can be there and, and let go in, of that jealousy. It will eat you alive. They're not bothered by it. Believe me, they're moving on. So we've got to do a work on ourselves and be professional always we're building a multi-million dollar business within our homes and we want to treat it with the respect that it deserves or are you going to be taken out it, it's just it's intolerable no one likes anybody that brings that type of drama to their team pages and to their business we can't help it we just don't like it and so we're go we're going to have to take you out if if that's going on and uh, I, I just have a zero tolerance for it. I'm sorry. I just, I'm just, I'm older now. I can say that. Well, I always like to think about it. Like in five years, what kind of business do you want? Cause that stuff won't last for somebody that's willing to stick it out, work hard for five years and build an actual residual income. That's for the people who are in it and they're going to be out, you know, as quickly as you can blink. So Thank you both for those awesome answers. Okay, so this one, how do you work your business while taking care of babies? Well, this is how I do it. <laughs> but obviously, you guys, whoever answered this wants uh, maybe a breakdown for it. So do any of you other ambassadors have any awesome answers for that? I can talk about it real quick. Um, can you all hear me? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so I've been in the business almost five years and I feel like it's, it changes. Like it's never going to be like a constant schedule or, you know, you're going to add new babies to the mix. That's what I've done. So things are always changing. Um, I think one thing that's really crucial is communication with your spouse because, and this is whether they're home or not at home. Um, because I think that that helps a lot. I know when Michael and I are not communicating, um, we start resenting one another when it comes to me working throughout the day and we don't talk about our expectations. And so things just get lost. So if you can, you know, sit down every single month and kind of like talk about, okay, what, what promotion are you going after? Like, do we need to change things up? Things like that. So communication with your spouse. And then also, um, one thing that I've realized over five years that absolutely helps me manage my kids and work my business is to become more organized. And instead of taking my whole day and trying to work throughout my whole day with my babies like grabbing onto me, and I learned this from Pam, is just to take one to two hours of solid focus. And that is the time that I will get to put 100% into It Works. And then if I can take 100% of my time, whether it's 30 minutes, she always says, your kids don't need more than 30 minutes. They get tired of you anyway. 
So if you can just take a hundred percent of focus on your kids, that's where you're going to feel so much more complete throughout your day. So I have notes saved in my phone that are easy copy and paste in conversations with people. Um, and then also just having that focused time. And I don't feel like I'm being pulled in so many different directions now. So, and just in learn to change, learn to grow. That's like the number one tip because it's always going to be changing. <laughs> That is so true. And I, I feel the same way. I mean, even though Aaron is at home, I could pretend to work 24 hours a day and get zero things done and not actually pay attention to my kids. But when you give each thing 100% at different times, that's when you really make those accomplishments happen. Okay, so if nobody else has any um, answers for that, we will move on to the next one. How many hours of work a day would you recommend a new distributor to do in order to be successful? All right, I'll answer that. You know, it depends on how much money you want to make. You know, I, small actions generate small checks. And so it's up to you. Uh, big, big, bold, uh, inspired, passionate action generates big checks. So, uh, again, it goes back to that, um, what Susan was talking about, uh, finding those hours or minutes within the day to go wherever you want to go. And I, for me, it was, I wanted to go all, all in and, and just get the big checks. And, and so I knew that that would take organization and that would take help. I needed help uh, within the house to be able to do that. Um, so get your house in order. And get your get your charts out, get your plan in order, and that's a, a personal decision because I can't tell you you're going to make a million dollars a year if you work an hour a day. That that's just really almost ridiculous thinking. So the action definitely needs to correspond with whatever that check you, that you want to generate. And so if it's uh, $500 a month, then you're going to generate a small amount of action for that. If it's a $5,000 a month, obviously that's going to be about 10 times the action that a $500 check would generate. Uh, if you want $500,000 a month, then you need to get very organized. You, uh, you need to sit down and put that out there. You need to talk to your accountant and let your accountant know that you're going to be generating a half a million dollars a year in revenue. And uh, that you, you want to be able to make sure that you set aside taxes for that. And what, why am I saying that? Because that's putting it out there that that's where you're going and you're getting set up. You need to set in with your spouse and you need to say, I'm going to be generating a half a million dollars a month in income. So this is what I'm going to be needing from you. And, and then you're going to get that inspired action and you're going to have that belief. And then here come the people. Here come the people and know that the systems are set or are in place for you because you're not going to be uh, doing anything but other than point and uh, dial them into the information that they need through the E-suite. You're going to have it all ready, rigged and ready. So who's going to go after that? I want to say something. Yeah. Hello. Hi, so, Hi mom. Okay. Hey, baby's in bed. Oh, you guys, she has my child. <laughs> We're going to California in the morning. Um, thank you for taking care of him. Okay, so here's what I'd like to say. A couple things come to my mind. The, the first thing that comes to my mind is what are we even defining as work? Because I feel like if people set aside an hour, what are they doing? We need to be mindful about what that entails. And I think when I really look back at my beginnings, we're talking about a newbie. When I was in my first year promoted to double diamond and I was making five figures a month, I was making incredible income as a double. And I was setting aside, I would say two to three solid hours a day. But what it was, it was making investments uh, outside of, I wasn't partying with other kids in college. I was doing rap parties instead. I was setting up at 
local gyms and boutiques and whatnot doing vendor tables because that's what I could afford to do. And this is before Facebook, right? So there were so many things that I was doing in the field and I was spending that time doing parties. So if I had a party for an hour and a half, two hours, you better bet I was spending another hour with my follow-up and checking in with my distributors and my customers and doing everything I needed to do in that other hour. And I just remember so vividly just making those decisions that when I put my schoolwork down and took a break, I was focused on my business and I wasn't being social. And so I think we need to remember as we're coaching our teams, it's about making those investments versus, um, you know, just thinking oh, I'm going to work for an hour or am I going to work for two hours? Cause we have to be mindful of what that is. That could be a solid power hour. I feel like my team right now is really growing because they're focused on power hours and they're focused on what they need to be doing socially, but what they also need to be doing in the field. And they're doing a good 50, 50 mix of field building, which is parties and blitzing and really getting the wrap on people. And then the 50% is doing online social stuff. And so let's be mindful about what we're guiding them to do through their steps. And I really feel like that's going to, that's going to alleviate any question of how many hours should I be working? Because nobody can answer that question. It's like mom said, it's about how hungry you are. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you what I was hungry, but when I worked for two to three hours, I worked solid. And that's, the, that's what makes the difference. Okay. Remember that uh, somebody said to us, well, I'm staying up till two, yeah. 2 a.m. We're like, what for? what for? Think like somebody magically is going to come through the computer at, at 145 and join your business. No. So where they're think they're hearing that people are staying up late and they're thinking, well, that's what I'm supposed to do. So uh, it is what, you know, when, when I'm, when I was home with the kids and I had that window of opportunity from the time that my workout ended till they came home, you better believe those were income producing activities. Those activities involve bringing in new business, not existing business. It involved in bringing in new customers, new distributors. That's what that, that crunch of time was. Then outside of that, I could do other things such as my personal development, uh, if like now scrolling through Facebook mindlessly and seeing what everyone else is doing, that's not making you any money. That is costing you. I mean, if you look at, take your check, divide it by the hours that you're working and look at what you're making an hour and say, is that, is that amount of money worth me just mindlessly scrolling through Facebook? And you'll, the answer will be no. So income producing activities should be, the vast majority of what you should be spending your time on. And uh, then a part of that time obviously is looking at that leadership. Who's on my team, who's rocking it out. Uh, everything else can be grouped together. Group trainings. Uh, we have zoom. Now we have technology that works in our favor uh, and utilize all of that. Great. That's a great question. Great question. Well, and I just want to add to that. I worked, whenever I started this business, I worked 60 hours a week night shift. So I was 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. I had two small kids. And so, you know, I could have had the excuse of I don't have enough time or whatever. But it's, we all have the same amount of time and newbies need to understand that. And I think that's where the feel felt found can really come into play. Like, I understand how you feel because I felt the same way when I started. But I learned to capitalize on my time. I didn't go to the bathroom without my cell phone in my lap talking to somebody hiding in the bathroom at work so it's about capitalizing on your time not just how much time you can spend but using your time the quality time so I think if we can you know make our newbies understand that we've all been there but you're working um, diligently at this business so you can get your time back so you can have that time that you know we now get to have as leaders and stuff in this business oh, great insight Hey, Pam, can I add something, too? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember Mike uh, about four or five years ago gave us the three R's, and I always go to those when I feel like I'm scattered. And um, what, the first R is recruiting. So, it, you know, whatever time you have, you want to split it with the three R's. So the first one is recruiting. The second one is retaining your current customers and team. And then the third one is recognizing. So um, that's kind of where I focus in on when I feel like I'm all over the place. Oh yeah, that's awesome. That's beautiful. Um, I want to add to this just really quick. I know that um, Zooms are amazing. Trainings are amazing. 
but they don't actually make you money. And so, you know, I do one on Mondays with my team for an hour. Everybody knows it's there. That's when it is, period, end of story. And I think kind of when Zoom came out, people – Sorry. <laughs> I think people kind of thought, oh, if I do a training every single night, if I train my team, if I train my team, if I train my team, I train my team, that's going to build my business. But I don't know why he decided to come now. Because <laughs> you're on a Zoom. I'm sorry. <laughs> so one second, my husband's using the bathroom. Um, so that is not an income producing activity. It's helpful. Of course, we, we want to connect. We want to see our teams, things like that, but realize how often you're doing it. And if that's actually an income producing activity and I see it sometimes, sometimes it's too much. Sometimes people are having them. Every uh Oh, so okay. sometimes um, we lose her on her zoom. Sorry. So I, sorry. There we go. I'm back. My, uh, it's your of internet. Course, of course. So, you know, sometimes I see it and then we have to realize too, these new people or these people that haven't yet gotten their time back, they are here and they're telling their husbands, I have to take an hour each night for this Zoom. You have to take the kids. I have this. That time can be spent on parties, relationships actually messaging people things like that and so I think just think about the fine line between how you're spending your time with trainings and zooms and how you're actually spending it bringing people into your business because every single problem every single solution just like what you say Pam it's new blood it's always new blood and you don't get new blood with a zoom you just don't <laughs> And, you know, one of the things that I learned early on, I guess before we had technology in my first company, I would actually have people, because everybody pretty much was local, come to my house and for two hours. And, and my training ex was actually, let's get on the phone and let's, let's call people. And that's what we did. I held their hands as they called their mom and said, will you be my customer? Because their mom was going to say no. And I knew they were going to fall out on the floor and I might lose them. So you could take these Zooms that you're doing for training and let them be that type of Zoom. Let, let's come together and let's get our four loyals tonight. Bring your list. That's how you're going to get on the Zoom. Now, let's message Start with A, let's message, message them this. You could put it in the chat group. They could type it in. And then you could start to get the answers back. You know, you could coach them through that. Oh, gosh, she just, she just said a cuss word to me. Or this happened or that happened. That, to me, is the most effective training Zoom. And that's what I would highly recommend that you do. And let that be a power hour training Zoom interactive where they're actually getting party. It could be, let's schedule parties. It could be, let's get four loyals. It could be a number of things that we're trying to do. Let's do a follow-up zoom where we're following up with everybody. And you could put in the chat, you could put some uh, pointers some scripts that they could be using, but that would be powerful. Something that I've noticed too since yesterday when we announced this keto coffee is that I'll, I'll speak only for myself is that, oh, I signed everyone I know up when the 999 hit or everybody I know knows about the wraps. Well, we just launched a brand new product and we have a brand new product line of something that we certainly didn't have and nobody else has. So what I've been saying to my team is you should have a brand new 100s list just for people who drink coffee. Anybody, I mean, I can scroll my newsfeed and see somebody's posting about paying a forward at Starbucks or they're drinking coffee at work or whatever it is. We have a brand new product that's coming out. We have this pre or, I mean, like that to me is so exciting. So I've been really wanting my team to take advantage of that. And like, you should have a brand new 100s list just from people who you see who, you know, like coffee and who knows, I mean, Pam, if you want to tell us what else you have, you guys have coming out on the Zoom tonight, we can keep that a secret. But I'm okay. super excited. It's a whole new, it's a whole new crop of people. Let me just type it in here for you. Thank you. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> if only someone. One of the questions is, 
will we be coming out with a whole keto product line, which I, I feel like that was kind of said on the video, but I'm not sure. So I didn't want to ask you, but I feel like. Well, I, I think if we did a rewind on that, we could get a two snaps up. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So when you have legs that fall apart and distributors on those legs aren't working, yada, yada, there's not much mo more growth. What's the best way to go about charting? Do you use the leg as a 400 box? Even though the volume coming from that leg is super high, well above 400, do you start building a new leg? Help. <laughs> wow. Okay. So some of you, uh, I, I know my answer to this and it's so cut and dry. Does anybody else want to go? Well, I assume your answer is new blood. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, why are you going to build under some, something that's dead? You yeah. know, it, it just, it just, it's already gone. And so I, I look at it like it might get revived. I, I would just, we, we've had people come in and build a diamond in less than 30 days. I mean, that's what you're after. And they did it themselves. So that's the way I would do it. I would just, just, you never stop bringing in new blood. You know, what, what kills it is some of you get to double and you go, well, I'm not going to bring anybody new in until I get to triple. Well, you've already just, you just sliced it right there. So, or I'm not going to bring any, I'm Emerald. I'm not going to bring anybody in until I get the diamond. So I get those $80 leadership bonuses. You just cut it off right there. You just stopped all the energy flow right into your business. So you can't think like that. You, what you want to do is always be, there's always new people. There's always new people. There's always new people. So bring someone new in, work with them. Tiffany and Cody Chapman are the perfect example of this. I use them all the time. Fast speed to presidential, set there for three and a half years, trying to move and prod and pull and push their existing team to ambassador. Once they got over that, they put in new people. They took them there in eight months, I believe, once they, once they made up their, their decision. Bring in new people, always, every day, keep going they're going to take off. You don't need to be doing all of that for everybody. The only time I would do that is if I needed that fifth leg that, that I needed $400 for, then you might throw something in underneath somebody. Okay. So okay, I think can I that add one, one quick thing, because yeah, I'm yeah. reading some of the, the comments on here. Um, when you look at that leg, like if it's got high volume, that means that there may be somebody deep within that yeah. leg. And so, you know, figure out like, where's that volume coming from? And then reach out to them. I don't care if you enroll them or not, because that leg can get you to ambassador work with them. If there's nobody, like Pam said, if they're all dead, then yes, yeah, start over, use that chunk of volume as like a 400 leg or whatever. But I want you guys to think of it this way. Why would you want to celebrate on the night that you go ambassador with like nobody in the room because you, you worked with these legs that aren't even working. Like it, I, I personally had the choice to work with certain people that weren't active in the business or run with a runner on like my fourth level. Everybody above her now has quit and she's my top line. And I'm so glad I ran with her. So find your runners, find new life and celebrate ambassador with these excited people, not people that don't even want to work it. You know, Susan, that's so smart because, you know, I think about it people that you know it's like the duns were down on carla's like 17th level i believe and they're now like right up there at the top so if you do have volume and it's growing it's not stagnant and it looks like there's movement there absolutely dig down in there and find out you know who's doing what but if it if it's just old and it's stagnant move on great answer can i add to that as well that was me. I was on Denise's like eighth level and everybody above me had quit. And, um, I actually reached out to her, you know, and I'm so grateful that she took me under her wing, uh, because I didn't really have anybody else, you know? So, um, I'm all for adopting the people in those low levels. And I've seen it happen many times with me where my volume just, um, is up higher and higher on, you know, certain levels uh, as time goes by. And now I think I'm on her third level or something like that. So. Wow. No wonder she's black diamond. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> it's funny how that works out. It always, that's what I love that we have compression because I don't ever have to feel like, you know, anyone is stuck down there and all that. So it's amazing. Okay. So this is a good question. How do we stay one team on mission while still protecting our teams? I've gotten close to so many sidelines or collaborated with other leaders only to have them leave shortly after. It's enough to make me want to completely cut out any sideline inputs, trainings, relationships. How can we be on the offense against poaching while still letting our teams learn from other leaders? Wow. That's, that's loaded, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. All right. So uh, who else do we have on here? That's ambassador that has not spoken because all ambassadors are pretty much one team. Who, who's on here? Melody's on here. I see her face. Melody, she would be awesome at that. Melody, come <laughs> on. Okay. Oh my gosh. Okay. So the question was, how do you, how do you, how can we be one team, one mission when there's people that are leaving that are poaching after you've, you know, you've trusted in them and all, I mean, we've all had that happen recently. Um, you know, it all comes down to integrity still uh, we have to continue to teach integrity and to teach people you don't do that uh, you know i've had people that have told me that they've sent prospects to a one team one mission and the leader there took their person so it's made me to where it's like okay wait don't send a guest send you know sponsor them first and then you can send them or whatever so I mean there's still there's always going to be people that you're dealing with that are you know that are less than than honest and um, I mean that's a part of life but it comes from us we have to teach sometimes people don't know any better you know that's unfortunate to say but they really don't they don't know that what they're doing is wrong I mean you would think they should know that, but sometimes they don't. They look at it as, well, that, it's business. You know, that's just business. And, um, you know, it comes to integrity. And you just got to make sure that you're teaching your team to be, uh, you know, to follow the golden rule. You know, I'm always teaching follow the golden rule that, that do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And, you know, there's going to be the ugly ones out there and turn them in. You know, turn them in, let people know that they're doing that, and just expose them, you know, to, to leadership. You know, go tell somebody in, in behind the scenes and say, hey, you need to be aware so-and-so is doing something like that. And, um, you know, you do have to protect yourself. But, you know, if somebody's going to be taken like that, um, I mean, maybe they just weren't meant to be in your business. So, um, you know, it all just, it, it just boils back down to integrity. You know, we just have to continue to teach it and preach it and help people to understand if you do things like that, you're going to be looked down upon, you're going to be frowned upon, and we're, we're not going to let you get away with it. Yeah, it just goes, that's so good, Mel. Uh, you know, Mel and I've been doing this a long time. Mel's been in the industry longer than me, and uh, we've seen it all. You know, the good, the bad, the ugly. We want to give people the benefit of the doubt that it is coaching that is needed. But when you've got somebody that has left that you were close to and they are going in, they're, they're taking people that aren't in. They're taking people that are easily swayed. They're um, probably not working their business. They, they could be dumb and double dumb, but they sat down a year or two years ago. And they're just looking for a reason to leave. And, and they go thinking that they can go over there. They're made uh, a lot of promises. I'm going to build you up. You would not believe my Facebook inbox, especially recently, of the people that have come to me and said, um, I made a mistake. It was, I made a mistake. I followed so-and-so and they didn't do what they said they were going to do for me, which is basically, I'm going to build you and they get over there and they're, they're not obviously. And so that happens, but that's a valuable lesson, but I, I don't want us to 
close down our hearts and not be one team, one mission. I don't want us to, to go out in fear of people taking people. I want to give everybody the benefit of the doubt. And if you sense something like that's going on with somebody, um, you know, just come to me and I, I don't hesitate in calling and saying, hey, are you open for some coaching? I heard this was going on. There's always two sides to the story. Typically, the one that's screaming the loudest is the one that's doing the most. Um, so let's just, again, it's, it's business. Let's keep an open mind about it. But let's, we love this one team, one mission philosophy because it's working for us. And Melody, you were with, uh, bring, bring you back on because you were with a company that for 10 years you were with this company that did not allow you to speak to any other leader or you were ostracized if you did that. I mean, you were cut off at the knees. That's not the right. way we want this to be. Yeah, it was really difficult because you couldn't even be friends with your sideline sisters or, you know, they called it cross-lining. And they were so adamant that you could not cross line. They didn't want you associating with other teams. You know, I, I, I never understood the, um, the thought process behind that. I just knew that I didn't like it. Mm -hmm. And I knew that, that I, there were some really good people out there and we could share ideas and learn from each other. And in that company, we couldn't do that. I mean, it was very, 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 bad if you did that and yeah. um you know so what we have with it works is really special and that's what i keep trying to tell people you guys what we have here is so different so special with me having been in the network marketing industry you know it's cutthroat out there mm -hmm. and you really don't see people with a one team one mission attitude uh, you know my my uh pink company that i was with they had a program called go give and that was the closest thing that that i knew of that was a little bit like it works where um an area director would take in people that were in her area even though those people's directors were in another area so they called it a go give and they just kind of treated them um, like they were part of their team and and it was a trust factor there But you know when what we've got and it works you guys is very rare And so we have to protect it and we just have to you know encourage people to Open up and and like Pam said don't you know don't be afraid to continue to you know push the one team one mission mindset and attitude but teach integrity to new people to let them know that with this type of culture that we have, that there has to be a great deal of trust and that we have to be able to um, know that if we are, you know, sharing with one another, that it, that it will, it will just continue to duplicate that way. And, you know, um, I was recently in a workshop, Pam, and I don't, I don't know if you know this, but they had the, the speaker had said, it was on leadership, and the speaker had said, um, how many of you, now this was so cool, because they, um, there was, I don't know, there was like 98 people there, and they were from all different companies, and they said, how many of you have a, uh, that your company has provided you with a getting started program. You know, something that's in, in stone that you teach your new distributors and they teach their distributors. How many of you have that, that your company has provided that for you? Well, of course I raised my hand, but what was interesting, there was only a few other hands that were raised. Then he went on to say, well, okay. He said, you should have that. And he said, and if you don't have that, then you need to get with your CEO and you guys need to figure out something like that. And then he said, how many of you that your company has a foundational rank? And he said, what I mean by that is one that's fairly attainable that you can, um, you know, that those people can make three to $500 a month and you can take that rank and build all the way to, to your top levels. How many of you have that? Well, of course, we've got Ruby. And so I raised my hand again. Just a few raised their hands. And then he said, how many of you have training in your back office for new distributors and then has training for your leadership? 
I raised my hand again. <laughs> and again, just a few hands. And so he went on to say that if your company is providing that for you, you are blessed. He said, because that is not the norm in network marketing. And he said, it should be. But all a company needs to do, what they're only responsible for is providing you with product and a pay plan and shipping. Everything else is up to you because you're an independent distributor. And so, so if your company is doing that, then you are, you are blessed to be in a company like that. And, you know, that is important for you guys to know that that these companies, most of you have never been in network marketing before. And the companies that are out there are, um, you know, they're, they're just kind of cutthroat. They don't provide you with the things that, that Mark and Pam and Mike have provided us over the years. You know, they don't have to do what they do. In fact, the other companies I was, I was with, we never saw the corporate people ever. And here you've got corporate coming into your backyard all the time. Pam traveling all over the country. You know, so um, I kind of got off on a tangent on that, but I just think it, I just thought it was important, Pam, that, that you guys realize that we really do have something special. And that one team, one mission thing is unheard of, really and truly, in the world of network marketing. Because people are cutthroat, they don't trust each other, and it's it's all about me, 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 and they could care less about you, you, you. And here we embrace and we say we are coming together because we all have one purpose and one goal, and that is to enrich other people's lives and to help them, you know, to, to become successful because together we're better and we can all communicate you know, that way. And, and it really does. It really makes us special. And I think you guys just need to know that if you don't already know it. So anyhow. Wow. Thank you for that. That was incredible. I appreciate that, Mel. We work very hard at that. And I know that one of the big reasons for that is Mark and I were in the field. We didn't have that. And we wanted that so badly for all of you so that you could just get in and go to work. So thank you for that. It's beautiful. All right, we'll go on to the next question. Just a few left. I put my business on hold and slowed down. I'm ready to get back running, but I'm overwhelmed on where to start. Okay, then start. Just <laughs> I knew start. you would say that. You know, just start. <laughs> That's the thing. We just start. You know, there is no perfect start. It's just get up early tomorrow. Whoever wrote that, get up early and uh, prepare, prepare for your day tomorrow, tonight, set, lay down in your bed and write out what, what you're going to accomplish tomorrow and be excited about that. Set your alarm clock to go off a little earlier and get up with that inspired action and that knowing that today I start. And just start, start making those phone calls, start connecting with people, start following up with your existing team and your existing customers, just start. That's so true. And I think also kind of just getting your goals down for the morning or tonight or whatever, that's going to kind of help you get refocused. And so make sure you know what you want next, because maybe you already accomplished what you thought maybe you couldn't. And so you don't know where to go next. So decide what you want. All right. Can, can I, I add to that? Yeah, Barbara, really yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I see in the chat people are saying the five-second rule, and I just got done reading that book. If you have not read that book, I highly recommend it. It's by a woman named Mel Robbins who has an incredible story. You can also YouTube her. And the concept is really like you know exactly what you need to do, and – you end up thinking about it too long and then you talk your own self out okay. of it. So, um, you know, go to YouTube and put in Mel Robbins five second rule and you'll find some videos on it. But just like they said, you just have to start and stop oh, overanalyzing and overthinking everything and just get to work. All right. So here's the title, everybody. Oh, wait, sorry. Wait, mom. I, Mom, unmute yourself. Sorry, I unmuted the wrong person. There you are. Okay. All right, so I've got the book right here. It's Mel Robbins, The Five-Second Rule. Mel spoke at our DSN 
booked in April. She was actually the moderator. So we had an opportunity to meet with her and hang out. Um, her, her, I mean, I've got this book dog eared underlined. I go back to it all the time and I love it. And uh, I recommend that you, uh, you can get also, she was on a Ted talk. That's where she really got her start. Uh, she's about to lose her husband. She's about to lose her job. She did lose her job. She was depressed, uh, pulled herself out uh, by doing five, four, three, two, one, go. And the whole mindset behind it is just brilliant. So I'm not going to take away from it any longer because we have a couple more questions, but Mel Robbins, M-E-L-R-O-B-B-I-N-S, five second rule. I had something to add about um, just really quickly too. Um, I was, I reached a point, you know, I got super overwhelmed with um, my 2.0 and who to build. I had leaders quit. And so I reached a point in my business where I just, I didn't mean to, I don't feel like I meant to, but I unintentionally took a break. And so when I went to start again, I was looking at what everyone else was doing. And so I think that's easy too. If you do take a break, even if it's like two days, it can be really hard to jump back in. And so I was looking at what everyone else was doing and I felt overwhelmed and incompetent. And so what helped me was I um, got rid of everyone, um, not permanently, but I, from my newsfeed that did it works. And I put myself where I was in the very beginning when I was just starting. And so, you know, I re put my why out there and I just focused on getting my four customers and three distributors again. And I stopped making it overcomplicated because if somebody came to me on my team and said, you know, I need to start over or I'm wanting to get back into this because I get that a lot. That's what I tell them. And so I was saying it, but I wasn't doing it. And so I think, you know, especially at a diamond level, I'm sure you've had that. And so going, you know, practice what you preach. So if you would tell your team to do that, then you really have to do it too. And it's kind of a hard pill to swallow sometimes, but like, seriously, like Pam said, you know, taking ownership of that. And that's, it was a game changer for me for sure. Is just pretend that you're starting over. You really are starting over. And so just get back into it. Beautiful. Thank you, Amanda. Okay. You guys can hear me, right? Okay. Awesome. All right. What common qualities do you see in a strong leader? All right, so you want to do, is this the last question? Um, this is not the last question. There, okay, let's, say, let's ask that last. Uh, let's go, go to one more okay. and then let's ask that one. Okay. Um, all right, so this is kind of goes along with the other one too. So if we want to skip it, you guys can let me know. How do you separate people in the business from the business itself? I'm having a hard time moving forward in my business. After all, the fallout, friendships gained and lost, people quitting, People being snarky and disrespectful after losing respect for leaders I looked up to, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What was the first part of that? How do you separate people in the business from the business itself? I think like those relationships from actually working the business is. They're already helpful. gone though. Are they already gone? Uh, it just says I'm having a hard time moving forward in my business after all the fallouts, oh. friendship, gain and well, loss. You know you're you're then you're dwelling too much on the past you know that's like you go back and still date that same boy again over and over again that has been gone for two years and you're you're living too much in the past i know it's hard uh you know because they they were friends uh let's face it when you're when you're building with a couple of people together it's exciting i mean you're talking all the time you're saying what's going on and and you you miss that but there's all these new people out here that haven't had that opportunity to to get that leadership from you and that fun from you so take what you've learned and, and go build new it, it'd be like again going back and trying to to stay in the past with that same guy you you when you left him and let it go and you got over it and you move forward you met your husband and, or you met your future boyfriend and you want to look at it like that like there's this whole future out here for me what did I learn from this I learned that other people leave that's what I've learned but I'm not going to be skeptical about everybody I'm not going to to think that other people are going to do that for me. I'm not going to live in that negativity. And just, again, don't allow them to take your power away. 
own your own your power by moving forward, setting those new goals, setting uh, how you want to end the year. What what do I want the end of this year to look like? I want it to I want it to end strong. I want it to end powerful. I want it to be impactful. I don't want to end it depressed or negative or thinking about the people in the past. I, I want a whole new. Uh, I want a whole new team. I want a whole new group. I want a, a whole new business. And and think about it. Like, get excited about that. Talk about it. Talk about what you do want and stop talking about what you don't want and, and what was in the past and, and look forward to the future. And that future is right now. That future is this moment and what the Zoom has brought to you and uh, the, the excitement that you've gotten out of it and that you're going to go uh, project that onto your team and and uh, just just every day, just look forward to that moment, that next moment and the next moment and the next moment. And most importantly, focus on what you do want and stop talking and thinking and reacting on what's happened in the past, even if it was just yesterday. Can I share an amazing quote? Yes. So um, probably, gosh, Scott and I have been together three years, probably three and a half, four years ago or so. And I was going through my divorce and I was so beat, like felt so beat up and sad and lonely. And like my business was, I felt like crumbling and I had to start over. That's how I felt. I'm just giving you how I felt. Doesn't mean it was all true. It's just how I felt inside. And I'll never forget. I had some leaders leave my team and I, mom call, I called mom and I was just like boohooing like a little baby. Like I was like having a temper tantrum. Okay. And I'll never forget. Mom goes, look, nature pours a vacuum. And I'm like, what? I said, mom, I don't have time for your philosophical talk right now. Like I am upset and I'm your daughter. I need my mom. Like I don't have time for that. I was so upset. I was like so mad because I was like, I don't have time for this. And, and she goes, listen to me, Kay, you called nature abhors a vacuum. And I'm like, what does that mean? And she said, everything's clearing out so that th the person that you are becoming, the person that you're looking forward to being and the life that you're looking for forward to living, that the people that come in are going to be a match to that, to who you are now and who you are becoming. And I was like, oh. And after that moment, you guys, that aha moment clicked for me and my entire business shifted and forever and ever will. And I want you guys to know that for everything that's coming in your future, for the person that you are now, for the person that you are becoming, that the people that are in your business at the, at now and in the future are, are a part of that. And I look forward to that for you. And when she said that to me, it shifted. So just remember that. If you have to remember anything, remember. Um, Remember, those that, those that come into your business and those that are here now are a match to who you are and who you are becoming, and that's just a brilliant thing. So don't beat yourself up. Work with integrity, not with fear, and just keep plowing forward, and I promise you it's all going to work out forever and ever and ever. It's always going to work out as long as you remember that and keep working with that in your highest regard. Beautiful. Hey, uh, uh, hey, oh. hey. Yeah, they Sorry, want you to say it again. I'll yeah, type can it. Can say it again? I'll type it. Thank you. Oh, you know, it's just like you clean out your closet. Here's just something that's so random. You know, you clean out your closet, you get rid of everything you don't want. What happens? It fills right back up again, right? <laughs> it fills right back up again. It's almost like within no time, it's full again, and you go sweep back through it. And again, you uh, let all those clothes go, those shoes go, those bags go that, that you're no longer using, you give them away or sell them or whatever, and then it fills back up again. Your business, when you first start, it works. You're, you're wondering if it's going to work. You know, you're just, you're just kind of going through the people. And I always say that the first 3000 people that we put in, uh, they quit. And I'm, um, I'm so thankful for them because I ruined them. You know, I just absolutely ruined them. I, I didn't know how to talk about the opportunity. I didn't know. Um, 
uh, how to express the, the compensation plan. I, we didn't have the steps to success. We didn't have a, a, a blitz card. None of that was all of that. I learned to do through them. You're learning through the first people that you bring in. And the, and we always say, you know, it's very rare that the people that got you to diamond are going to get you to double and the people that got you to double are going to get you to triple and you're going to have a whole new team by the, by the time you get to, uh, to ambassador, you might have a few in there, but that's why we continue to add people because our dreams and our visions expand and we, we, we grow with the opportunity. So we need the, those people that can grow and take us into that black diamond. And these are, these are going to be workhorses. These are going to be people that have a big vision and have a big dream. And they're going to go to ambassador very, very quickly. And that's why I always say that it's unfortunate that right when people leave, they're just starting to learn and they're just starting to grow and they're starting to move and if they would stay and hunker down. They would, uh, we've got some, some, some static here, I think. Sheree, Sheree Hayes, Haynes, I can't mute her for some reason. Can you mute yourself, please, for me? I'm so sorry. It almost sounds oh, like thank you. there's a Halloween movie in the background, and I was hearing that, and I was thinking that that, that clown from the movie, it was going to be coming up at any moment. Did you see that picture of Angus with the balloon, the red balloon outside the door? I mean, it's so scary. So anyway, here we are wanting to build this massive business. So what we do is we bring in new people all the time that are gonna match where we are at that moment. Everyone else exit out. They just do. It's a detox, it's a cleansing. So thank you for that, Kay. And I think it's important to know too, sometimes there's conflicts and if we try to fix them and they can't be fixed, you just have to remove yourself from it because it's all really just a distraction and you have, people sitting right in front of you begging for your attention or potentials that are begging for you to, you know, reach out to them and change their life. And you have to just let the distractions go and focus on the new people and the people that they are, they're asking for, for your help, for your love, for your friendship, for your training. And then that's when your business will explode and you'll be renewed because you really can't, you really can't have longevity in the business without having the friendship, fun, and the freedom. You just can't. I mean, if you're not having fun, you're going to get bored and you're not going to want to work it. So, okay. So the, the, there's two more questions okay. and they kind of go um, together. So what's a good way to present the new keto coffee if you don't drink coffee? And then the next one is how do you promote a product or products that you personally don't use or can't use for whatever reason? So I'll answer the first one. Um, I don't drink coffee, but I'm still promoting it because 50% of the population does. I'm not going to pretend like I'm drinking the coffee, but I will explain that it's a healthier alternative and all the benefits from it. Um, but I just personally won't be using that product and that's, that's okay. You know? Um, and then as far as the next question how do you promote a product or products that you personally don't use or can't for whatever reason? Um, I think that goes along the same thing. You know, when I have a before and after, I might not look like the person in the before picture, but someone watching does. And so, you know, even though I might not be using one of the products, if I share the products before and afters or someone's testimony or results or whatever it might be, they're still going to be interested in that. And so I think you just kind of have to let go of, maybe it's like a fear of them saying, Hey, where's yours? And I would just say, Hey, I don't, I don't drink coffee or for whatever reason, I'm not using the thermal fit because I'm pregnant, you know, <laughs> but here's someone that has and has amazing results. You know, do you want to try it? You know? So I think it's just kind of goes back to that asking. And if anybody has anything else for that, I think I'll just add, like, you know, I ask people what their goals are, like, what do they want? And then suggest things based on that, like, you know, oh, you have stretch marks. Okay. I have, you know, something that you're going to love, even though I personally don't use it. You know what I mean? So it's the same with the coffee. Um, so if someone comes to you and they want to lose 10 pounds, okay, what's your diet like? Do you drink coffee? Do you work out? And then, you know, kind of suggest based on that. Um, I think, yeah, some Amy just said confidence, like, 
you got to have the confidence in the products, you know, and you, you definitely want to be a product of the, of some of the products for sure. Cause that's going to kind of carry your confidence into everything else. And then um, what Christy just said, you know, align like power up with before and afters and testimonials and ask people what their goals are, what they want out of this, and then find something that we have that can help them. All right. Perfect. So there's yeah. that one question, Pam, if you wanted to answer it, um, okay. what common qualities do you see in strong leaders? You, you know, that, again, that goes back to uh, the, the reason that I wanted to go through all the ambassadors here is when I look at each and every one of them, I, they, there is a common thread in it, but everyone's so uniquely different. And I think that that's beautiful. But you can come into it works and you can come from all walks of life and and have different leadership skills and we're all developing those you know we're not mark and i are always still developing and reading and attending uh workshops or what whatever we can go to to lead ourselves up so that we can take better care of our business and our teams but i think the most common thread that i see is leaders are readers i mean leaders are always growing uh, they never feel finished. They feel always like they're just getting started. And they're, uh, we're always reading a new book or listening to something new. And, you know, I've got my little circle of, of great friends that I'm always sending things to and saying, oh, what do you think about this? What do you think? I get excited about that. I get excited about learning. I get excited about growing. And if, if you feel like you're done or I know everything, your, your whole life comes to a standstill. We're always going to be, I hope I'm 90, 100 years old and I'm reading something and getting excited about it. And it's taking me to another level of thought. Uh, all of you learned something tonight and you had aha moments all night long. I, I would, I would be listing those because others need to, they might not have heard that little part and they might get an inspiration from that aha moment. So leaders are learning, they're growing and they're evolving always. They never feel finished. And uh, I think that that is the biggest common thread that I see. And we, even leaders at times, we need uh, that acknowledgement that we're doing a good job. We need, uh, we need to be taken care of too. Uh, we are human beings after all. And uh, if you've got a leader that you admire, that, let them know. Let them know that something they said or did for you uh, moved you in a different direction. Uh, it can mean the world to them because believe me, leaders lead with every ounce of heart and body and spirit that they have and they give you everything that they have and a lot of times they're not getting something back and you know we're we do our best at it works to love on all of you uh but unfortunately it's it's just it's impossible but our hearts are there and we see the work we see the things that you go through believe me we're not judging you at all we know life sets in life happens and we all have our our flow through this business but i wanted to thank all of you for having me on tonight and allowing me the opportunity to come into your homes your bedrooms your your bathrooms wherever you are your kitchens uh with your kiddos and let you know that i love and appreciate all of you and i just think we're all strong i think that we're incredible human beings and I love the fact that we're all doing this together. And when I thought about a team and building a team, um, I, I see all of you and I just feel blessed. I just really feel blessed. I feel like I could, we were traveling and have it going through that hurricane experience and our family felt like we could go anywhere where in the U S and beyond and be taken care of. And I'm, you know, there's not a lot of people that can say that, but we really felt like that. And uh, I felt so much love and so much heart uh, through that experience. And I want to thank you all for that. So thank you for having me on tonight. I uh, really appreciate all of you putting this together. What a great, great Zoom this was. I hope all thank of you, you benefited so just like I did.
Thank you, Pam. We appreciate you taking out your time and all the ambassadors. And thank you guys. I know some of you are on the East Coast and it's late. So I appreciate you all staying on too. And I hope you guys have a good Wednesday night. Bye, Bye everyone.